Sports Card Podcast, where we tackle the hobby's hottest topics in depth to help you navigate the sports card landscape and enjoy the hobby we all love. Here's your host, John Newman. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Hobby Quick Hits. Today's show is titled Going Full Time. Now, I was, you know, to, to for those that may not know, I was full-time from 1992 to about 1997 with a brick-and-mortar store, but those that was eons ago. This is a completely uh, different hobby. When I was full-time, it was before breaking uh, was invented. It was, you know, the cards were different, a lot less releases uh, in the hobby, a lot less glamour and glitz with the cards, uh, prices were were lower too, uh, and uh, so it's a it's a whole new uh, world. But uh, I'm still a a very active uh, seller, uh, even though it's not a full time venture. And I can tell you, 2020 for me was so good, I almost almost did it without you know really doing it, and uh, you know just from the comforts of, of home and working. Uh, a real nine to five type job. And, uh, you know, I don't expect that necessarily every year. And I get asked a lot, you know, people, even fam- family and friends that know I, I had the store, you know, every once in a while my son might, you know, kind of ask or hint, you know, you ever think about doing a store again and going full time? For me, probably not. But that that's me. That's a personal choice. I have my reasons. I might even talk about some of them during this episode, but I wanted to talk about going full time. And, and, you know, I I sat down one day and I kind of said, if I was going to do this again, you know, I kind of did the pros and the cons of it. And this kind of what this episode is going to be sort of uh, uh, framed uh, about. And uh, let's be honest, going full time in the hobby is two things, right? If you ask me. It's exciting, right? Who who wouldn't want to do sports cards as a job, right? I mean, if you, I, I, I would say yes too. And I'm not, you know, I've done it. I've been there, done that. And I don't do it now, but that's that's great, you know. Like most would say, that's not even really work. But I also, as someone's been there, it is more work than you initially think. And there's a little stress level here too. As much fun as we are all having, hopefully. Uh, in the hobby, you know, doing it as a full-time venture changes the dynamics. Whether you think so or not, it changes the dynamics. Now you have the stress of this is my income. This is not extra income. This isn't a side hustle. This is my income. If I open that store and I don't make a sale or I make very little sales or it's a light traffic day, Man, what do I, you know, a, lot, a little more stress there than, than me sitting in the studio office surrounded by wax boxes, graded cards, and single cards, and I get no notifications on my phone of sales, right? Okay, well, I'm going to work tomorrow. Uh, no big deal, right? Uh, it might be disappointing because you want to, you know, you want to support your, your hobby and, and maybe buy something. You need capital, but it it's a it's a changing equation thing when you're doing it full time. For someone like me who doesn't do it full time anymore, I just say, okay, maybe I'll have a better sales day tomorrow. And a lot of times that is the case, right? And with a store, though, you can't have too many of those kind of quiet uh, days. And so your pressure is going to go up as much fun as it is, unless you're you know going coming into a situation. Maybe you're you're taking over an existing store um, that's doing well, but the, that owner, again, if he's doing well, I don't know why they may want to get out. Uh, so, so you got to look at that aspect. There's so many variables. I can't cover them all, but, you know, going full time where it is, you're not working. Now, let me, let me, you know, put an asterisk sort of there. You know, some people will, will, can operate a store sort of part time and then they have other income. But if you're doing the hobby, you know, full time uh, as your only income, it, it's tough, and uh, I think it's tough anyway. Now, 
I, you know, I keep mentioning brick and mortar store. You can go full time. You know, going full time is not just relegated to I have to have a store and four walls and a key and, and go in somewhere and open the place up every day. People do it full time uh, from their home. You know, kind of what I'm doing, except they don't have that that job to fall back on. And uh, you know, uh, to me, breaking, you know, I, it, is. It's hard now because there's so many breakers, but I think that's such a a big part. Most successful stores or full time people, uh, breaking is a a good percentage uh, of their business. And uh, you know, when you look at a lot of successful stores, they they have a huge online presence and they have a breaking presence. I'm not saying you can't be successful without breaking. I don't break. I had my my best. One of my best years in 2020, uh, you know, P and L wise, uh, and I even just kind of alluded to, uh, almost was full time, just w- what that number was at the end of the year, which I, I'm I'm going to keep close to the vest here. Now earlier in the year, about the six month mark, I kind of mentioned uh, a number, but I, that was the last time, and I'll leave it. I'll leave it at that. Sorry to be sort of sly or, or secretive there. I just, I don't like advertising. I'm a little more close to the vest uh, with that stuff. Uh, uh, that's just me, okay? I even even when I gave that six-month figure out, I almost didn't do it. I wound up, I did it. It's out there. It is what it is. But, all right, so going back, you know, you don't have to have a brick and mortar to be full-time, but, you know, it's 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 a whole different thing, you know? You, then you got to... I don't know if you're, my son's 20, but I'm also an older person at, at age 48. You know, you got, I don't want to make this into a financial show, but you, you know, we're talking about benefits and retirement stuff, 401k, you know, I, you know, and all the companies I've worked for, I've always done the, the ESOP program, you know, the employee stock purchase program. And so you're going to lose some of that uh, when you go full time and leave a job that may offer pretty good benefits. That's something you have to weigh out. You know, may, a lot of times maybe the wife, if you're married, uh, covers you there and it works out even better for you. And that's, you know, every situation's different. But it's something you got to think about, benefits, right? You know, you get my age, you're getting older uh, and, and stuff may happen, God forbid. But I got to think about that. And, uh, you know, leaving the job and leaving those and something happens, and then you get that bill, or depending on, you know, there, there is uh, insurance for people who are self-employed or own their own business, but a lot of those, and I'm not an expert, not a health insurance expert, a lot of those are very, very pricey, and some people say not that good when it, when you do need medical attention. So, again, stuff you got to weigh out on your own. This is not, you know, a health program here. And uh, so we're, we're, I'm not going to get into that. But it is a factor. It is something you have to think about. And, you know, there's a lot. Let's be real. With the hobby boom the last few years, there's a lot more people jumping in full time. So that competition pool is a lot more crowded. You're going to be, you know, when you're swimming, you're going to be bumping into people. You're going to hit and be bumping elbows. And so you got to kind of do something a little bit different. I've always said what I did in my store from 92, 97, that, that formula would not translate to today's game. It just wouldn't. I'm, I'm, I'm very honest about it. So if I thought I was just going to take what I learned in those five, six years of store ownership, you know, go rent or buy a place and, and put a sign on the door and it's going to be as successful today as it was then, not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And the other thing, you know, when I talk about those five years that I did that, the five or six years I did the store. I just did, I did, did an episode where I kind of broke it down. The first probably year and a half, we were not, we were doing okay, but we were at a sort of like, do we keep going? This is not, and then it really kicked in the gear. So you're going to probably have to, you know, every, again, every situation is different, but you may have to brace yourself for some struggles early. And so are you ready for that? If you're doing it full time, you know, the first couple years, you may spend 
more than you're intaking. And that was the case with my store. For the first two years, you know, we uh, we were uh, behind. In other words, we spent more than we made. And then in year three, it really accelerated and 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 we took off. And so, you know, again, that that's you know over twenty years ago. Uh, you know, uh, and times are different, money's different, hobbies different. I get it, but you know, it, it, there's more money in the hobby, but the stuff's more expensive. Look at what wax is going today. You know, one of the biggest complaints from the store owners that I talked to, and I talked to quite a bit that I know or have been on the show, it's getting wax. Is wax availability, right? You're not, you can't, you know, if a store owner goes to Walmart or Target, chances are there's going to be nothing on the shelves. And then the other problem with that is if a store owner buys blaster boxes and brings them to the store, people sort of kind of uh, critique them or criticize them, right? And, uh, and oh, here they are just trying to, to, to survive and make a living, but they're looked at negatively hey that's not supposed to be on on a you know a, a hobby shelf it's a, for the retail for the kids and so it's a double-edged sword and wax is a huge part uh, of the hobby uh, and uh, you know i i sell a lot of singles graded cards raw cards but you know what i sell a lot of sealed wax too and i've been you know uh, knock on glass here i've been very thankful you know, that Montgomery 582 Club with those exclusive wax offerings have really uh, upped the ante for me. And I, I know other people who are listening to this who are also uh, in that uh, same boat uh, are probably saying, yep, you're right, John. You know, I'll use a recent product, you know, the, the UEFA Sapphire Soccer. You know, I sold a box probably too soon. It's a 32-card box. There's no, there's colors and, and parallels, but there's no autos in it. 32 cards. I sold one for, for almost 500, and I still got one. It's right here on my desk, and I'm probably going to get ready to sell it. They're in the four, di they're in the four digits now, $1,000 for 32-count uh, box, right? At 1000 bucks. Those 32 cards are costing about $35 a piece before you even open it. So whoever buys this box and the market sets the price at a thousand bucks, right? That person, now they may be in turn selling it to someone else. That's their business. But if they're buying, if someone's buying that UEFA Sapphire Chrome Soccer to open and they're spending a thousand or more bucks on it, they're, they're paying literally unseen. $35 for every card in that box. And let's be real, not every card in that box is going to be $35. Now, they may hit. There may be a card in there, you know, and I don't know my guys, so pardon, you know, excuse my lack of knowledge. There might be, a, a, someone might get a, a card number to five of the best guy in that set, a rookie card, and it's it might be five ten thousand dollars $10,000, right? But what honestly, what is the likelihood of that and and that's why I, I open less wax and sell more uh, of it and for me this year Montgomery 582 Club has been huge and I'll be honest with you if you're open a store and you're going full time being a member of 582 Club is going to be uh, I don't want to say important you can do it without it but man that's going to definitely help when it comes to the ROI I mean one of the you know, one of the reasons, not the only reason, I sold a lot of graded cards and a lot of raw cards. But 2020 was so great for me because a lot of that wax that, uh, you know, doubled, tripled, quadrupled, you know, or more in price from the suggested retail price. And, and having that access to it, why do you think everyone's, you know, uh, trampling over everyone to get a Montgomery 582 membership that, doesn't have one, right? Why Why is the demand so high? It's not for the sets. Let's be real. As much as I like those little 20-card sets with your, your Alex Verdugo auto you're going to get, uh, you know, that's, you know, those are cool too, but people aren't trampling over each other to get in the 582 club for the sets. Uh, most, most of the, most of it's coming from, I want access to those online exclusive because they come, you know, you're paying, 80 bucks for a box and the box is selling for a thousand bucks it's 920 dollar profit uh, uh for 10 minutes of work 
you know, what job pays nine, you know, maybe a doctor or a lawyer, but 900, and maybe even not that, $920 for 10 minutes uh, work, right? So, so I think if you're a Montgomery 582 member already and you're going to stay in it, which why wouldn't you not? Um, that's going to help you as a, as a full-time uh, person uh, getting in if you're not somehow when they open it up. But here's, you know, that's the rub. A lot of people are saying that that membership may increase. We don't even know uh, what the snafu tops had this year. We're not even sure now how many uh, 582 members there are. We, we weren't sure even before that, and now there's maybe some more. So with more members, maybe more gets printed and values aren't exactly the same but uh you know going you know i'm not a dream crusher i just wanted to kind of give you some perspective as someone who did it albeit a long time ago uh, old man on the porch syndrome uh i love brick and mortars too besides full time i love brick and mortars i'm glad they're making a comeback i i applaud everyone jumping in and, and getting that done i think there's something to be said about going opening that door, hearing that, you know, a little bell on the door ring and you're in the store and you get to handle the cards, talk to a store owner, you know, buy some wax off the shelf, pick your pack out of that box yourself. And, you know, there's, there's some lore to that. I'm old school and I love that. I'm glad card stores are making uh, another comeback and I'm, I'm glad to see it. But I also wanted to talk about it's not just as easy as, you know, renting or buying a, a building, uh, putting an open sign on, putting your stuff in showcases. There's 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 a lot to it, and that goes in any business, not just sports card. But you know, the other thing that that's a little something to think about, and we're gonna wrap this episode up here, coming down the home stretch. But you know, the hobby right now is at an all time high. Sure, it's a great time, probably probably no better time to you know if you're gonna go full time than right now. But for those that think there's going to be either correction, uh, like myself, or those that think there's going to be the bottom's going to fall out of this thing and there's going to be, you know, the that word crash. I don't believe that, but there are others that do. You know, if if, if you're if if it was to be true, let's just hypothetically, you know, the stores are going to be the first thing that really feel that uh, and uh, you know something to just. Uh, keep in mind and consider and and you know just one word of advice if i may give it you know uh if you're gonna go full time it's just you you know try to do so i i know there's nothing that's really not been done yet but you know try to think a little bit outside the box what can i do to uh you know you know change maybe kind of what's been done or what can i do a little differently and bring a little change of pace uh, to to going full time, you know. If you're brick and mortar, I mean, one of the things I love to do back when I when I did my store was uh, get to know your customers. Right, people like being called by the first name. You know, someone walks in and you say, "Hey, Bob, how's it going? How's things?" And you talk. They've told you something about a family. Hey, how's your dad? I know he was in the you know that stuff. Customer service, we've seen the bad side of customer service in 2020. Some of it related to short staff with the pandemic uh, outbreak. But customer service is a huge thing. You see people berate tops, especially tops and panini on their customer service. Well, in the store, if you're going full time, customer service is a huge uh, part of what you do. And so start there because that's something you can really control you can control uh it's a variable you have complete 100 percent control on is customer service and so start there and build out from there so if you're full-time uh, i wish you continued success and good luck if you're thinking about going full-time i don't need thing i'll just tell you is just think about you know sit down write the pros and cons think about your situation your age your family kids can i provide Will they have medical, all those other things long term, right? I'm going to, you know, at some point I want to stop working, right? Uh, potentially. And 
am I going to have enough to retire? And, and all those things we should be thinking about, hobby or no hobby, uh, anyway. So, again, I hope you found a little insight uh, in this episode. And, uh, you know, again, whatever you're doing, enjoy the hobby, whether you're doing it as a seller, as a collector. I don't even care, you know, if you want to use the term flipper, this is America. Enjoy the hobby, uh, hobby your way, and we'll see you next time. Hey folks, thanks for listening to the show. Wanted to give out our social media links where you can follow the show even when you're not listening to it. On Twitter, we are at Hits Hobby, at Hits Hobby, H-I-T-S-H-O-B-B-Y. On Instagram, we are at Hobby Quick Hits Podcast, at Hobby Quick Hits Podcast, all one word. Our website is www.sportscardnation.net. Look for the link to Hobby Quick Hits. You'll find us there. And you can always text us on our text line, area code 315-491-0239. Hey, folks. Thank In case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night.